checking out all the galleries and to see all the work that local artists have done. So here at the Art Museum, we do have this perspective on for quite a few years and uh, this has been a very cathartic experience for me. I'd like to see what some other people feel about it. With me is Greg Johnson, the artistic director from the Montana Rep at the University of Montana. And uh, you're from New York, I know that. I am. I'm a New Yorker. I, I lived there for 20 I was born in Staten Island with a view of the World Trade Center. And uh, I, was, I lived in Manhattan for 20 years. Wow. So why did you come here tonight? Well, Tony's an old friend of mine, you know. And, and it is a way of, I don't know, healing or trying to make some sense of... Uh, because, uh, and, and the whole concept of the loss of the Twin Towers is, is such a huge one for all of us, especially if you're from New York. And, uh, and, uh, and to, to see Tony's interpretation of that, first of all, you know, one of the, he's just a terrific photographer. He's just so talented. He's got such a great eye. And there's such a sensitivity to his work. And, uh, you know, people say they're ugly, they're, they're wonderful, or they're cute. They were, they were a lot of things to a lot of people. How does this show affect you emotionally? Well, I'm, I'm sort of going through a lot of different things. A lot of different things. I'm missing my friends. I'm wishing I could be with them. Uh, uh, it, it brings back the, that morning we all watched those planes fly into them and, and, it, and how, how magnificent and how, how, what a huge thing that was in all of our lives and what a target. We're here with Laura Mullen. She's the director of the Art Mus Museum of Missoula. And
to selection of, of photographs, and I was impressed. And I said, wow, this is, this is an exhibit. And we didn't really have room for it in our schedule because we had other exhibits scheduled. And, and that's why it's just a one-week exhibit, because we were able to just push back the opening of, an, of the, uh, the next installation in this gallery and squeeze this in for one week. Um, we wanted to do it right away. You know, we didn't want to wait. We knew that um, there was a sense of urgency about responding and processing um, how everybody's feeling about the terrorism and what happened to New York City in particular, I think. And, uh, and we wanted to offer that opportunity to the community, so we th decided to treat it like a forum and and open it for one week and offer the opportunity for people to come together and discuss the issues, um, look at the pictures, discuss the issues, um, and uh, and just view it, view the work when now when we're all feeling it, you know. What are some of the most poignant things you've heard people say about the work or their reaction to it? Well, I think the most poignant thing is the. Um, the far, you know, Tony made a really wonderful gesture to do, to dedicate the exhibit to um, uh, the brother of a friend of, of ours here at the museum, Jonathan Qualbin, who lost his brother Lars in the tower. And But it, he made the gesture in such a way to open it to other, to invite other dedications to come in. Because, of course, none of us have any idea who all, in, you know, in Missoula lost somebody or had a friend who lost somebody or, you know, how it goes. And so he offered this book of dedication here. And yesterday, I, a, um, a new dedication came in, and it's very touching. And so what is in that book? Um, it's a, it's just an it's a, just a blank book and it it offers the opportunity for people to bring their own dedications in and a woman brought in a snapshot of she and her girlfriend who who died in the tower uh. at the age of 24 and um, she was just really thankful to have the opportunity to share that with Missoula where she lives. And, um, well, so, thank you. Yeah, Laura. I'm, I'm moved too. I just think it's. I'm, I was just really grateful, really, that Tony gave us the opportunity to, without, without um, presenting anything that was macabre or sensationalist or anything, you know, violent, you know, to, 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 to but just to provide the focus and the opportunity. It's important. Yeah, it is a welcome change from all the destruction photos, I have to say. Yeah, exactly. So. No, we don't need to see more of those. We've seen so many, they're etched in our brains forever. So, so thank you so thank much. Thank you for thank coming you. down. Now we're here with... Day of the Dead, and that here we are in this sort of eulogizing a building, but more than that, the people that were there, and to see it all pasted back together, or and, and beautifully, the way Tony has done it, it's really touching. Also
John. Okay, see you soon. We're going to talk to Mayor Cadis right now. He came to see the show. He's the mayor of Missoula. Thank you for coming and talking to us tonight. Glad to be here. What brought you to the show tonight? So I ran into Tony a couple days ago and he said he was doing it and I read the piece in the paper about it and um, so I wanted to come see him. Have you ever been to New York? A couple times. Not, I don't know well. Okay. So um, you've looked around, I've seen you walking around the room and reading the letters and what has it meant to you? Well, a couple things. I think um, it it helps fill in the parts, pieces of the whole tragedy um, in ways that we don't know or understand. So I think it just offers a little more fullness to it, and hopefully out of that we can get some better understanding of it. Um, the other thing uh, that I really like about it is the connection, um, because you know, here's Tony of Missoula with a lot of friends and connections to New York, and a lot of knowledge and uh, all these photographs, and that uh, that kind of connection, uh, the global nature of that relationship, Missoula to New York, and to to see it quite so vividly here with all the words and the pictures um, is something I don't think we think about very often, but the fact of the matter is that in lots of different ways we're all tied together and so Tony's doing that for Missoula um, and New York and, and this really does a, an amazing job of, of tying us together. Mm -hmm. Do you think your life has changed much since September 11th? Change some. I suspect you know we'll never really understand how much has changed all of our lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But certainly, and then when you look at these pictures and read the quotes in particular, you know it takes you back to where you were September 11th, uh, you know, in, in early in the morning, and then kind of how the shock waves of the um, attacks kind of rolled through your day, um, and that's. It had a huge impact on the nation. I, I mean, I think. Well, thank you, Mayor Cadis. Thanks for coming. Hi, this is Ricky Danielson. We're outside the. Art Museum of Missoula tonight. Um, we've just finished looking at all of Tony's work inside and interviewing a lot of people. And um, I just found Roger Hedden out here. He's an old New Yorker. He's moved to Missoula, but I'd love to know what you have to say about tonight's show. Um, well, I haven't, I haven't been back to New York City since the um, September 11th tragedy. And it's funny what Tony captured for me more than anything else was just how omnipresent those two buildings were. Wherever you are in New York, you could see them, and, and you'd see them in different lights, in the different photographs sometimes. They, they're lunging out of nowhere as if you just turned a corner, and you, you know, you've walked off Broadway and turned the corner, and it's neon lights, and they're up there in their bright colors. There are times they're sort of somber and off in, in the distance, and just the, the effect of, of seeing something that's no longer there um, broke my heart. And, the fact that um, Tony captured this in the woods and the pictures together then give you hope because you go out of this, someone can make something that up, lifts us up in some way while still reminding us of the, the unbelievable <laughs> devastation. That they're immense. How can they not be there anymore? Now you're a playwright and uh, used to live in New York City. For the last 20 years. And so now you you live in Missoula. I live in Missoula. Yep. Right. Moved out uh, yeah. a year and a half ago, and and actually knew Tony from New York, and I'd always liked his photography, and just yeah, you know, then to get to see this exhibit is. So where were you on September 11th? Actually, I, I'd woken up and did what I think a lot of people did. I'd woken up and, and flipped on the television set, like, oh, I'm going to make a pot of coffee, and saw a shot of a replay of the plane hitting and thought, oh, it must be.
must be the new, you know, Will Smith movie or something. And then one moment later realize, no, this has actually happened. And then, you know, watched in horror and shock. And how has your life changed in any way since that day? Um, boy, when I'm writing a script, everyone has dead parents and things in it now. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, you know, death, it, it, not, to, you know, not to be glib about it, um, yeah, it's hard to write frivolously um, knowing this. I had one of my very best friends lives five blocks from ground zero, and yeah, it was two weeks after the disaster before he got back into his apartment, and he said that you know, it was beautiful weather there, it was gorgeous, so all his windows were open. So he spent the next five or six days when he was there every day having to, to vacuum everything in the apartment because it would be covered with ash. Each day a new layer of ash, and around the third day he realized Oh, and of course, this ash is also people, and wow. you know that shock is just. Mm. Uh, so, had you seen any of Tony's work before you came here tonight? I'd, I'd seen over the years. I'd seen mm. lots of but it. And actually, it was uh, I'd seen a couple of the, the absolutely stunning photo where the trade towers are framed within the black framework of a. a I don't know if it's a building under construction or just where they're framed in that ironwork, so mm -hmm. the centerpiece photo. Right. I think that was Ellis Island, I think. Oh, I'd okay. seen it as... because he, he captures it not just, I mean, that photo is obviously framed in blackness, a, a, you know, a beautiful memorial shot, but the scenes where the building seems so alive, where it seems so much part of the skyline, you know, bright and illuminated and flashing, and there it is, and yeah, oh, when you're in New York, this is how you find your way around, am I, you know, you come out of a subway station and turned around, am I uptown or am I going downtown? I'm going downtown, there are the train centers, how much a vibrant part of the city it was, um, that the pictures capture so well. That's the shock. I know I'm going to be going back around Thanksgiving. The, the shock of being there and not seeing them um, to sort of give me a, a, a preface of how you know, brutal an experience that's going to be. Well, I hope you go back to New York and find all your friends intact. And Everyone I know is, is intact, just you know, incredibly shaken. Thank you, Roger. Thank you so okay. much. Good night. We're here with Tony Cesare, and we finally got to grab a hold of him. It wasn't easy, because everyone wants to talk to you tonight, don't they? Well, people have a lot of questions, and, it's, and have been coming up, and, and being very supportive, and very happy to uh, see it, which makes me very happy. So you must have seen a lot of people here that um, have given you remarks about their reaction to the show, what, what's the most, some of the most poignant things that have st stood out to you? Well, some of it is, is not even words. People have been just coming up and giving me hugs and saying thank you. Um, those who are New Yorkers, there's kind of a, a special, you know, tight hug of, of a shared experience. Um, People who haven't been to New York uh, have been asking questions about locations and where and seeing where things are. sink in uh, that, that 50,000 people worked in those buildings and another 80,000 people went through those buildings every day and in many cases, most cases, it was more than the populations of entire towns that people were from. So it kind of really put it in perspective to them. So you were telling me yesterday that um, you would take photographs of New York. Oh yeah, I, I've been taking photographs since I was about eight years old, I think. Tony, what is going to happen next with the 
this show? Well, and uh, they want to talk further about perhaps uh, bringing it to those museums uh, sometime in the near future. And that would be my, my hope for it, to be able to share it um, with Montana and the Northwest. Because I think there's a lot in New York City going on with major photographers who have shows going on and such. And, but I, I think there's less out here, and I feel like a, a representative uh, from back there. Yes, well, thank you so much well, for you. bringing you for this show to Missoula. Yeah, yeah I think I think a lot of people really, really do appreciate it. Have you seen... Well, um, it's, it's cathartic for me. It's wonderful for me to, to be able to ex express in a, in a positive way uh, my frustration, my sadness. Thank you, and I hope that you're able to bring this show to other parts of Montana real soon. Okay.